can start that recording as well so we have a backup mm. and then i'm going to go on to the control room and or the room setting and i will do remote record start all uh, now, after the podcast, don't leave immediately, Anthony, because I, you do have to send me that file uh, that it's going to be done. What you chewing oh. on there, bud? Yeah, it just started. What you chewing on there, bud? Oh, oh my god. Wasabi flavored peas. Yeah, not not as am interested. I, in am I am I forwards now? Forward? Your mic is on on the right side of my screen. Like you can read things. No, uh, no. I had to read no, backwards. No. We still have to read backwards. It's backwards for me too. Huh? Funny how that works out. <laughs> oh, and I think I think YouTube streaming is working for us. By the way. <laughs> And we're live on the Twitch. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. I like the I like the on air uh, little yeah the little thing on air me. symbol yeah on it's air like, yeah there's yeah an there's like thing. a little square it's like uh, like we're on an actual it's radio like an talk show oh my gosh on we're air on air I wasn't yeah, looking yeah, over there yeah, 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 that's yeah. so cool I, I was like actually it. watching y'all through OBS which is kind of a cool experience too because I can see everything on OBS oh I see which is pretty dope and i didn't have, have no that issues. previously yeah OBS. looking Guys, gorgeous I, I have to show you something i got something for from my wife so she surprised me and she got me this it's the best oh my god that's adorable it's the best photo i, I have i can't say it because i don't want us to get kicked off right of i know right. we can't say it the first 20 seconds we have to wait till 10 minutes in then we'll oh, revisit I've heard fantastic. 30 seconds. I've heard 30 minutes. I don't know what it is. I don't either. I, I have no It's a denomination of 30. No we know that. It's ridiculous. Oh, so good, though. My wife is fantastic. Heck yeah. Oh. Oh. Um, do we want to, like, kick this off, like, all good and well, right? Because I think we all have what we need now. We, uh, we all have the... I hope the, so. We all received the package. Do we have... Do you have the package? <laughs> Is the is the package packaged? I just want to know why yours wasn't delivered to your house. <laughs> I'm still so curious. Okay. So this was sent to a Walgreens. What the fuck? A, wait, a Walgreens? No, sorry, a CVS. It was sent to a CVS. Half an hour north of my house. Why? Why? I did not put down an address for it to be delivered anywhere else. It just got randomly sent to a CVS across town. So, I'm glad they, it went to a CVS and not a neighbor. Right? I don't they, think a neighbor would have kept it for you. No, no. It would have been in the same situation we had last time where I would have had to ask for another one. And uh, presto changeo, I would have had two boxes. We got a new VIP card, by Guys, the way. The booklet is huge. Dude, the booklet Whoa. is huge. Oh, it's thick. They have upgraded their booklet uh. quality, by the way. So for anybody Guys, who got it this year, this is pretty dope. Our new go live things. We put these on our doors so our wives don't come in. Do not disturb oh. tasting in progress. Yeah, that's not gonna work with my wife. <laughs> this is this is pretty work. cool. They give you it's a nice little up. door door knob. By the oh, way, you can anybody... put this up instead. Please bring more whiskey. Please. Yes. <laughs> That's also not going to work. It's also not going to work. <laughs> it's, that a, is, it's a thick that is, book. That is a thick What is with the card? Ooh, they got, it has color, guys. Ooh. It's got actual, like, full-on, like, decorations yeah. of, of stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Look at these motherfuckers go. This is a lot better than last year already. Yes. Ooh. Dude, yeah. they're not just that. Always... Nat. What? What? Where? There's a bookmark. I know. I saw. Wait. There's a bookmark? There's a bookmark. Yes. At the very back. Oh, it's my gosh. Red that's, string right here. That's so good because I I don't know. I, I never showed it to y'all. 
But like but. my old booklet, because of how I was trying to like keep this open and everything. Oh, it's de it's, it's permanent. Like, it's permanent. The, the corners oh, yeah. are like super bent. Yeah, on mine this is thing. mine has a crease that runs oh. right there. Yeah, they they upgraded the etching. The glass is etched up. Dude, this glass feels thicker. Wait, hold on. Let me go ahead and get this VIP card out. Eric, you Welcome better be very careful. Oh, you already took him out. Yes, okay. I already Black. took him out. I already took him out. Wait, uh, so... Audience, if you've, if you've seen any of the early on episodes, you would know that Eric is prone to pulling things out with so much force that they fly across the room. I, I have oh, actually yeah. broken a lot of the Flaviar stuff, I admit. So wait, so does this mean that we can get stuff other than what they offer us on yeah. our current... Yes, so the Flaviar Black essentially allows you to purchase some of their special whiskeys on don't their your, website. Don't show your back. Don't show, don't show the back, guys. Don't oh, show the back. Yes, don't show the back, otherwise somebody will take your Flaviar Black. There's a QR I hope card. I didn't do that. No, I think Because I might have. Audience, Anthony, don't don't steal it. Don't do it. Don't. don't. He's, so, he's just don't a sweet boy. Don't steal it. I'm he's gonna, I'm gonna scan boy. this right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay, what's the safest way to take these these glasses out? Uh, full, slowly, very quickly. No, what? no, yes. no. It's no. kind of like a band aid. No. The the quicker no. you just rip that shit out of there, pull with the your better. wrists. Your wrist can't shoot out. You got it. <laughs> Actually, I think twisting helps. I guys, I didn't follow any of your advice. <laughs> oh, put just, your mouth on it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so Spit bad at streaming, like, Anthony. One second, I gotta. Did I mean, you not? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't oh, invite him to know, the thing yet. Eric, apparently we need to do something. I didn't realize. What? I think even if even though we're not partners, I think they do ads. Mm, I I don't think we can activate ads until we have our first level. No, no, no. I think ads happen. Oh. Oh, I don't, that's the new thing that they just started, I think. I think what we what the recommendation is, is, uh, I don't know where it would be, but basically, maybe creator dashboard, but basically, you want to do three minutes of ads an hour, otherwise, they do pre-roll ads, and pre-roll ads are the worst thing in the fucking world, because people will click, and then they'll be like, oh, fuck this, click, oh, click away. Oh, yeah. Wait, like so how do, how do you turn them off? Um, uh, please hold, out. Judge. Please hold, audience. Uh, Twitch. Oh, I can't read Ash's settings. witty um comments. Oh no, we didn't uh, join the chats. You'll have to actually join join the Twitch channel now. I are I, don't fuck with me. I joined the Twitch chat, didn't I? I I joined the, didn't I? I don't know. I should give us our prime, my Prime subscription. Actually, uh, I'm gonna. Comment I don't on think that, I don't think you can. To be fair. Oh, fair. Okay. Oh, because nobody could, can't. I can't subscribe yet. That makes sense. Yeah, we don't have Facebook. subscription. Pull very Facebook. slow but fast. Wait. So, do we have a tap haven? Twitch. Yeah. We yeah. Do. Yeah. Yeah. It's the uh, it's tap haven. If you go to my if you go to my Twitch, you'll see it at the top. Yeah, I have I have yours. <laughs> And you should see are oh, you, the YouTube. Na, are you not following our Twitch channel? Oh no. What is this? I mean, how do you follow yourself? I have you as a mod. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thanks for the follow. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for the follow, <laughs> unknown user. Oh my! Does it say unknown user? No, sorry, I was looking at mine. That's that's okay. the wrong one. Okay. No, okay. I can't see that one. I was about to say, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Ash is so ashamed of me. Gonna ban him. <laughs> she has the power. <laughs> oh, she has okay. the power. Disgusting. Maybe uh, we don't have ads if we're not an affiliate. Maybe. I didn't. I didn't think so. I didn't think. So. I hope okay, not. Okay, I'm gonna put. Twitch's chat on the left side, my face on the right. Got it. And then, yeah, I already put you as a moderator, Nat. So I'm you're good to go. I, Three months ago, mm -hmm. I made you a moderator. We've been doing this podcast for almost eight months now. Well, well, that's when I started doing Twitch streaming. That's when uh, I started. Wait a second, it's been it's been over a year, bro. 
Uh, it's not been well, over a year. So we started it's been a, since a, before I moved. We started a month after Eric. We started before I moved. Yes. Yeah. So we started. We have been for audience. We've been doing this podcast for traveling. over Everybody a year. Watch. However, <laughs> Nat is going to look correct to the audience because we didn't start releasing our videos oh. until February. We started recording prior. Yes. Yes. That's right. We pre-recorded right. about 25 episodes. And I factored that into my answer. Or not 25. We pre-recorded about 15 episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so yeah. this will, this the end of this year will be the first year of Tap Haven, essentially. I'm going to have to come up with an actual background. Like, I feel like it's time. <laughs> I so in the new year I plan to get a new desk and redo this wall over here and have that be my background which will be much nicer once I get everything set up but that's going to be a new year uh, mm. uh, issue not a this year issue because after this week I will not be back until the new year <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So we're here for it. Yes. So guys, are we are we doing this? Number one? I think we're doing it. I'm not even I, like the, the book isn't it's intimidating. I oh, love it. The vials are so much easier to get out. What? Okay, right. Okay, I was like right Mine too, but that's because of my wife them all out to make sure they were all full of liquor oh, oh yeah and then put them back yeah. in not all the way because my fingers are too big for the Ooh, tiny little box number one uh, number one which which she looks like a whiskey which by the way is a a whiskey that we know we know we've have we tasted we we have not okay um but this is a Celebrity bourbon. A celebrity bourbon? Is it a Longhorn? Um, this is... Oh, wow. That smells... Whoa. I gotta, I gotta Are y'all using your new... I'm not smelling yet. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't going I to. Okay, just going because to. I, I... Okay, fine. I'm just you gotta it, drink man. the chemicals like all the rest of us. Like, just get over it. It honestly doesn't have a chemical smell, so I think it's fine. Oh, you actually checked. That's funny. Dude, it's totally thicker. It's, yes. it's heavier. It's than heavier. It, it feels it's heavier. thicker. It feels yeah. like a thick bottle. Thick, thick piece of glass. Thick! That's oh. wild. That's wild. Ooh, you got a little bit of, um, a little bit of acetone on the nose. Oh, but we're you sipping. also okay. got... Cinnamon. A, a, like, woody cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. Mm-hmm. Keep talking. Bourbon, bourbon, bourbon. Yeah, this this is whiskey. This is a bourbon Man. for sure. It smells Leather. like a bourbon. I, I don't whiskey. Do... <laughs> Wood. It smells like Walmart. Walmart it smells like cowboy boots on a Crocs hot on summer sale. day. Where did my one of my lights on turned sale. off? <laughs> oh, so my wife turned on one of my lights and uh, she accidentally turned it to the batteries, which I didn't realize were in there and charged. They died. God damn. So I'm Ooh, pretty okay. sure that Michael Buble worked <laughs> with Heaven Hill. Heaven Hill? Oh. Which is the distillery that does does this whiskey. I legitimately smell... Like the aisle of a Walmart. That's not good. Hmm. Very interesting. Maybe, maybe mine. Maybe has you're. The maybe you're getting too deep into it. Maybe. Maybe you sniff from higher up. So this is according to according to Flaviar, which I I haven't looked up their bottled and bond. This is apparently a seven year bottled and bond, uh, bourbon whiskey. Uh, aged four years in wooden containers, and then aged for three more after that for extra depth and complexity. So they just held on to this for another three years. Yeah. Ooh, and in buttery bottles. its buttery vanilla, oak, sweet honey, chard, spicy, rye are kind of the notes that they're, that they're saying to look for. 
I think the buttery vanilla is on the is on the nose. Yeah, for sure. I get like a buttery vanilla for sure. How do we feel about the bottle, y'all? So I actually like the Heaven Hill bottles. They they have like a Russell's Reserve feeling to them, especially the newer ones. Mm-hmm. But I also what? think it's kind of a basic bitch. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is what I it is. I honestly kind of like it. It's like it's kind of like classy. Hey, hey. Some guys that's Shut what they up. want. Shut up. <laughs> 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 uh. Oh god! <laughs> How fucking dare you? <laughs> I know. I wasn't saying that about you. I'm just saying I that's know. that's I a know. taste that people have. You're right? right. No, I think it's like kind of sleek, a little like it, yeah. it's stout, modern. Yeah. It's giving us a sense of str- strength and solidity or whatever. But I like the bottle. I think we're doing a new thing. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna rate the bottle. Cheers. To Cheers. Almost finishing up the year, our first full year. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of the start of our second year of mm-hmm. the Tap Haven podcast in a lot of ways, especially with us starting a new advent calendar, which is kind of what we started with last year. Yeah. So, Except in reality, we started with the most disgusting beer I'd ever had in my life. We did. Now, I thought that beer, I actually liked the Voodoo Ranger line. Which, by the way, you know that beer is going to be really hard to find now. Because it's a New Belgium beer. And New Belgium is currently underwater near your house. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> underwater. That's where the gold is. Yeah, the gold. Gold. Well, That's thanks, where the Master Roshi. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Go cool. Man, I definitely oh, get man. some of the the spice on the mm-hmm. flavor. I know get honey. Yeah, I get honey, charred mm-hmm. oak, and spices, and it's kind of juicy. Like it makes my mouth go like. Yeah, L- liquor tends to cause salivation. Like I know that, but like this one, I was like, "Oh, it's not like an astringent where like my mouth is immediately dry, and my body's trying to accommodate." It's more so like, "No, that was good. We're gonna go ahead and give you some some saliva to ruminate on that." Yeah, it has a little bit of the caramel on the end. It kind of coats your mouth a little bit and has a a depth of vis- viscosity to it that has this caramel spicy note. Mm-hmm. But at the start, I get lots of honey, lots of charred oak, mm-hmm. and lots of honey. That spice sure. is, is like... This is a really good one for them to start on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, this is a, a great number one. Start. A great it's a strong one. start. This is one of those where there's nothing particularly... Like knock out of the park. This isn't a whiskey that you drink and say, "Oh my god!" But it is a whiskey mm-hmm. that you will never turn down. Yeah, this they offered this to me like in like some shady freaking uh, dive bar. I'd be like, "Where'd you get this? Thank you, but where'd you get this?" No. <laughs> I came for I a bad realize, time, not a good time. I didn't realize that the bottle and bond act didn't come until 1987. I thought it yeah. was way older than that. Uh, the well, what you're thinking of is different. Like the taxation, the tax stamp, and things like that is different than the bottled and bond moniker. Hmm. But wow. I don't think they actually made the bottled yeah. and bond act until 1987, but they had this idea of bottled and bond much longer than that, if I remember correctly. Do you think the bottle and bond act established like the parameters? Yes. Yes. Like four years, et cetera, et cetera. So let's right. see. When did it? Wait, it, it, what does this say? In the box or in the book, it says that. Uh, oh, this is a typo. 
1887? 1897. Oh, way more dyslexia. Flaviar. 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 You have a typo Guys. on page three. <laughs> Just putting it out there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't, can't all be winners. The Bottled and Bond Act of 1987 is actually the oh Bottled God. and Bond Act of 1897. Um, 126 years ago, which both matches what Anthony thought and about when I thought the taxation stuff started, which apparently yeah. is accurate. Oh, hey, look, there's a back section for compliments and complaints. Mm -hmm. Let me get my pen for typing. <laughs> Let's uh, send the booklet back in with comments. Yeah. yeah. They did oh, do wow. a, a very smart thing. Uh, scan this to buy the oh, bottle. Oh, for a deal. Yeah, the they said this is for a limited time offer, too, so I'm guessing... But we gotta they... verify. We gotta verify yep. that's true. Gotta verify. I think the limited time offer might just be free shipping. Probably. Now, it's... I do know that they upgraded a little bit. I accidentally just, like, did a little page scroll through, and I don't know what day it is, but we have a it's wonderful... Uh, let's see if it'll focus here. Come on. Oh, is that what I think it is? That is definitely Frey Ranch. That's a baby right there. It is. It is that bottle right there, which, by the way, I think I also have an arms. Oh, my arms God, line. guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think mine's pretty low, too, actually, now that I'm looking at it. So that is probably my most drink whiskey of the year is the Frey Ranch from Arm Strength. It is probably my whiskey of the year. Uh, mm. There are definitely better whiskeys that have been released this year. That is not what I'm saying, but it is the one that I have enjoyed the most, the most often, and for the price is impossible to beat. See, mm. Ashley, I told you we need to restock before they get here. Free <laughs> yeah, free, uh, free shipping is the deal for uh, the black VIP Black Club, and then mm. also, um, I don't know what this special offer could entail, but I wasn't able to get past the login screen, so gotcha. it is what it is. Gotcha. That's fine. But guys, but yeah, I mean, this I is... Back. Solid. Yeah, it, this is just a solid whiskey. The Heaven Hill, Hill line, by the way, I've had a number of their products. I don't think I've had the Bottled and Bond... Uh, bourbon of theirs before, but I know I've had their base product and a few of their others. I feel like they generally fall under the moniker of just solid drinkable whiskeys. Yeah. And this one falls in line with that quite well yeah. uh, in a lot of ways. Um, and after uh, it's had enough time to, I guess, breathe, really, all of that Walmart smell went away. Yes. There you go, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the acetone died down for me too, pretty like real quickly. fast. Yeah, we need to start letting these things breathe as we're like setting up uh, the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, actually, we can't do that because well, no, I guess we could like uh, edit in an image of the bottle and like what we're drinking as we're talking about it and then then we can start drinking it so what i heard is that nat's going to hire an editor for us <laughs> uh i'm all right <laughs> uh, i'm all right i'm all crossed up i, I, I might uh so nat now what would you what would you rate this whiskey this solid uh what would I rate it, or what? What are my thoughts? What would you? All of the above. Okay. What are your okay, thoughts? Okay, 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 what okay, would you okay, rate okay, it? Okay. What would you pay for it? <laughs> and is it a daily drinker for you? So this is solid as hell. Um, I uh, I was initially kind of wary because the taste didn't really do anything for me off the bat. I had to sit with it. Like I had to like I could I had to roll it around. And usually whenever I roll around whiskey or, or bourbon, I I know that I'm in for some kind of uh, unveiling of flavor, which is great. But it also it tends to also either burn or get some form of kind of unpleasant taste to it. Like I don't get to indulge in the flavors as much as I would want to, much as you would think it would be easier to since it's in your mouth longer. All this to say. 
this is a this is a bourbon that definitely gets better as you get to know it better yeah this whiskey grows on you like the first sip you're like ah it's it's okay but like it's it's whatever and then by the midway through it i'm i'm like yeah i could i could drink this every single day i'm cool i i it's not breaking my bank and it's probably sorry it's probably not gonna break bank and it's definitely not rocking my freaking world but i would definitely say that this is a worthwhile in uh addition to the bourbon uh suite on my shelf i will probably buy a bottle of this um yeah i I would yeah yeah i would give this a 4.5 because it's like it is it's a workhorse man like it's not really doing anything special and i would i want a five to do something special this is just a good bourbon i can't i want it to be like a special bourbon for it to be a five i guess so i'm gonna give it a 4.5 it's really close it's really good and i would pay you said it was made by a, a uh it was supported by michael buble so michael buble did something with heaven hill let me let was me, it this or no so i'm not i'm not sure i just knew that heaven hill did some um uh, did some whiskey he did and i thought it was the heaven hill did yeah that really grows on you by the time you get to the bottom of your whiskey glass guys you're gonna be like oh this is really good <laughs> uh so so Michael Bublé did a different whiskey. It's the Fraser and Thompson blend with the oh. help from the Heaven Hill distillery. So uh. it was not this whiskey. Uh it was the Fraser and Thompson. Okay. But with the help of the Heaven Hill distillery. So well then with that with the withdrawal of a celebrity being behind it, I'm going to say this is like I'm going to say this is 50 bucks. It's been extra aged, uh, not so much all in barrels, which I think is a good idea. I would not want this to be woodier or uh, more char influenced. I kind of like the fact that it's kind of it's a sweet baby with a little bit of like a mean streak at the end. So, yeah, 50. And this would be a daily drinker for me if I already hadn't already said. Okay, Anthony. How do you? Yeah, so I had y'all on my phone, so I was able to hear you guys. But the reason I ran off was because I recently picked up this Evan Williams bottled and bond. Okay. Which was only like 17 bucks. I was like, wait, <laughs> bottled and bond, 17 bucks. The lady at the museum said if it's bottled and bond, it's got to be good. And it's like, I mean, it's good, I guess. Like, it's not bad, yeah. right? Uh, and I wanted to compare it. it. It's not like, oh God, I can't drink this. It's at least a three. It's probably a three, right? The Evan Williams. Um, but when I just tasted it to compare to, what are we having? What's it called? The Heaven Hill <laughs> bottled in bond. The Heaven Hill. <laughs> Sorry. He forgot already. He's drunk. He's yeah. a loose cannon. <laughs> the Evan Williams is very one note, very flat. Like just... Mm-hmm. Not much going on. I mean, it could be because I only took one tiny sip. So I'll, I'll, I might have to come back if it does change. But it kind of reaffirms what I was going to go with for my numbers of being like five and 50 bucks. Yeah. Because there's so much more going on. Like the, there's so much to smell. It had that moment where I was like, oh my God, this smell is intoxicating where I just want to smell it over and over and over again. I don't even want to take a sip. I'm just going to keep smelling, which is mm-hmm. a thing that occurs every now and then. Um, yeah. Thanks for the follow Skylab. Thanks so, guy. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like this one a good bit. It, it does make me want to go and just get it. It's one that I would like to just have mm-hmm. one that I don't want to you know, I want it to be on the shelf for a while. Yeah. If that makes sense. I want to be able to come back to this. Yeah. Like, it's not something that I want to go ahead and kill in a day, 
or something right. with like with like some friends like it's i want a weekend to kind of, drink <laughs> it's no weekend like right it's like a personal thing that like i would like to have as like a comfort yeah yeah it's like it, it really is that uh you know iron man burger you know it's like i want a burger yeah, yeah. it's like i want a I want a bourbon and that will this will just satisfy that oh for, yeah, sure. for sure have for enough sure. complexity that you're not like yeah there's a little bit of bad right there like i, I don't I don't know if there's any bad with this. Yeah, th this is the epitome yeah. of a classic good bourbon. For sure. It yeah. has all the right notes and none of the wrong notes. Mm -hmm. It's got ketchup and pickles on it. And yeah. they, didn't put, <laughs> they didn't put any weird shit on it. They didn't put oh, pineapple man. on it or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> Dude. What do you think, Eric? Yeah. Wait, did you rate it? What was your rating? He said five, five, and five, five, five and fifty, and oh, fifty bucks. I was 50. spoiled by the price because I was excited to s click to scan the thing. Oh shit! Is it I a daily drinker? Price. Is it a daily drinker? Yeah, I, I would totally daily drink it. Um, it's just one that I, I would like to acquire and hold on to it. I can see that. This, this is the perfect and. and I'm going to give my rating right out of the bat. I think this yeah, is the uh, the perfect example of a 5 out of 10 bourbon. It's a 7 year. It's right underneath the 6 out of 10s, like the Eagle Rares or the Henry mm -hmm. McKinnas or the Russell's Reserve that are the like 10 ranches. year bourbons, the Frey Ranch, that are right there at the like a 6 and 7 mark mm -hmm. that are right around 60 and $70 that are my greater than daily drinker but this is a perfect daily drinker five out of ten nothing's wrong with it there's nothing that's going to blow your socks off but at the same time when you're reaching for this bottle that's probably not what you're looking for you're looking for something that's affordable nice has all the flavor profiles that you're looking for that you can enjoy with a steak or chicken on a daily basis you know mm -hmm. something right off the grill with this is going to be phenomenal it's More. just sweet enough that it's going to cut through some of those things and it's just spicy enough that it's going to have some lasting power into dessert like i was about to say yeah yeah it's, it's just got body man yeah it's just a nice all-around five out of ten daily drinker for me too this is a, a wonderful pick by the way flaviar for, for well this is done. this is exactly what i would expect out of the number one uh, you know whiskey of the new advent calendar and it's an exciting start to the the year for sure guys i want to rewind um, to the first time that we started with the first advent calendar do you know what they started us with Oh I my gosh! I feel like no, it was, it was good. Was it? It, it was the Sagamore, the Sagamore Spirit Rye. Yeah, oh. and it was fantastic. It got it told it. It was the reason why I got the cast strength. Yeah, and was like, mm. oh my god, Sagamore is amazing. Yeah, we really liked the. I'm gonna have to go ahead and bring it. Up. You know what? We're gonna have to get a Sagamore for the. Oh yeah, I gave it a four and a half. Yeah, this was fantastic, and oh, so I'm just hoping, Flaviar. That this is a sign that we are we are keeping the practices from the last one, but also improving on some of the feedback on the others. I'm not saying I want a a five to eight out out of ten for each one of these. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, I don't want every whiskey to be perfect. I really, right. I I, do want, I want the them world. to explore interesting sure. whiskeys more so than try to find great whiskeys mm. like i would be totally fine if the advent calendar only had threes and fours but every single one was one was where i was like man this has this note this has mm. this note this is interesting in this way even if i don't a tasting experience exactly rather than just yeah. exactly it's it's because yeah. so, i don't think we do this for the drinking of the alcohol anymore yeah i don't think it, i don't think it's like yeah alcohol in, in in for us and for how we do it especially alcohol is a shared experience moment right mm -hmm. we go into it to share an experience with other people because and i think this is true for a lot of people 
I, you know, you have the rare exception of addiction and things like that, where that's totally different. But I think for a lot of people, alcohol or drinking alcohol is a very social engagement. You know, you're either wanting to share an experience, you're wanting to share stories, you're wanting to share environments and alcohol kind of helps you do that in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know, we had an interesting question in the chat just now from our co-host. <laughs> um, yeah, I was he, wondering how y'all feel about that. How do you feel about a nice bourbon at a restaurant but no Glen Cairn? I think mm. that it is very possible to have a good bourbon experience, but it is very easy, very easy to not have a pleasant experience without one. Yeah, I... like for me, I can't get the nose at all. You can't smell shit. No, nothing. It is definitely no. more difficult because yeah. the Glencairn is designed to help you nose the hmm. and, and no and nosing is what forty percent of the actual flavor pal uh flavor yeah, something crazy or something like that. It's like if, a large if not portion. More, in a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah. I know I've heard numbers before that range up to like sixty percent of your experience is through smell. And so I can believe that though. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. To see that if you have a rocks glass, that you mm -hmm. just don't get to enjoy the whiskey as much. Now, I will say, most of the time, when I go to a bourbon place or a whiskey if place, you go to a bourbon and I'm going yeah. to try whiskeys, they actually do sometimes put it into a Glencairn glass. That is rare, though. And a lot yeah, of places maybe. use rocks glasses. Nat, can't, I can't wait till you're here and you get to see. Uh, we'll go to one restaurant. They'll yeah. have really nice whiskeys. It'll be in a normal glass. We'll walk down like the a, street. What, no, no. We'll, we'll walk down the street. We'll go to the bar. And they'll have Glen Cairns. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so crazy. It's because one of the bartenders, he was so cool. He moved. He, he got them to get them. Yeah, yeah, buddy. And he's a real cool, dude. He's like, I think he's in like California now, unfortunately. Oh, uh, good for him, but unfortunate for us. Yeah. Also, he timed it just right. He left before the big storm. Oh, so, perfect. <laughs> nice. Did he yeah. like had an ex uh, opportunity or something like that? He went to school. He started going to school. Good for him, man. Yeah. He uh, maybe he has some survivor's guilt. I hope you do if you're listening. Oh, I'm just kidding. Wow. Just kidding. <laughs> I didn't know we were that kind of podcast. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, he's a he was cool. But it's hilarious. Uh, but at the same time, that bar, um, if you just like look behind everything, you'll be like, wait, that's Angel's Envy. Wait, that's Eagle Rare. That's really good in a in a Glen Cairn. I'll have one of those. And then they fill it up to like here with the uh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. No, it's incredible. <laughs> it's like that's too could, much alcohol. <laughs> yeah, but one and done, right? One and done. One and done. You had literally three whiskey drinks. Yeah. At one time. I will say, yeah. the place. So there, uh, I've gone to Dollywood a few times now, uh -huh. and I don't know if y'all have been to Dollywood. Dollywood is in like northeast Tennessee. And Dollywood, that city is kind of like built around Dollywood. Near there, there is this strip mall. Inside of this strip mall, there is this Italian restaurant. You walk into this Italian restaurant, and this was like a super nice looking Italian restaurant. I walk in with my wife's family. We go up to Dollywood together we stay at this little cabin we go up to this italian restaurant i walk in and i turn right in front of me you don't turn left no shut up no i turned right <laughs> i turned right and there were there was a little foyer room with some tables in it it has a raised ceiling that went upwards behind that there was a bar inside of this foyer i looked up and i was like why is this here because the ceiling of this little area was at least a hundred grand worth of different whiskeys, all against the walls. Then I go and full. look at the bar. Full. 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 Then I go and look at the bar, and I'm like, wait a second, that's from the antique, wait, this is from the antique collection. 
That's from the antique collection. <laughs> These are from Wait, the this antique is collection. this is like a Honeywell Old Forester. This is what is going on? I am in the middle of nowhere in a strip mall. The guy who owned this Italian restaurant used to run the largest liquor store in Tennessee. Oh, uh, in Tennessee. Yeah, that'll do it. And so he yeah. went and opened this Italian restaurant because he wanted to move into the restaurant business. And he had all of the hookups with Buffalo Trace, Old Forester, Bro. all these things. And so he he said he had to keep buying them. Otherwise, he would get off the allocation list. But he never stopped buying them. So he oh is able God. to get all of the antique collection every year for Tennessee. He's able to get all of these specialty whiskeys every single year and he takes a loss on them he t mm. so if you were to look at like bottle prices for some of the antique collection for example the sazerac 18 the sazerac 18 i think costs like 2200 dollars right now right dude the second more is great yeah yeah the 50 second more 15 no, 18. The Sazerac 18. 18, Sazerac 18. Which is not okay. by the Sagamore. That's the Buffalo yeah, yeah, Trace different, different. Yeah, Sazerac yeah. Rye 18 year old. Which right now, if you could find the Sazerac 18 for the there here's one for fifteen hundred bucks from a few years oh. ago. Here's one for twenty four hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. I was not expecting that many zeros. <laughs> yeah, and so if you if you look at it, there's thirty shots, right, or thirty servings in a seven hundred and fifty milliliter bottle, right? So if you take let's just round it to fifteen hundred and we divide it by thirty, that's like fifty dollars for a shot to buy that bottle. Those are, wait, those are really big pours, Eric. I thought a normal pour was one and a half ounces. So if you do 750 divided by 30, you get 25 ounces, yeah. right? 2.5 ounces. Yeah. No, 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 no. 30 milliliters, 25. 30 milliliters. You get, it's 750 milliliters. milliliters. 25 milliliter. Right, sorry, I was doing ounces. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm so dumb. Yeah. We live in America. So there's only there's only about That's actually like a half pour. Yes. So yeah. if you look at two of there's them, like fifteen. There's, there's 15 like fifteen in a real pours. So if you do fifteen hundred divided by fifteen, you're gonna sell. Typically, what people do is they sell this because the shop owners don't pay aftermarket prices. They pay MSRP plus taxes. So they pay about $250 for this bottle, right? You just can't stop. Wow. And then they sell the shot, the, the pour for about $100 to $200. Pick up your investment. Yeah, for sure. This guy was selling me two ounce pours for $30. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. He, Is he still he, there? Yeah, I go every time I'm in Dollywood. I've been three times do. since. Yeah, of course you do. I actually, and I, I'm not going to out him here on the the podcast, so nobody will ever to, know. You don't want a TikTok ep well, episode. <laughs> well, also because I wanted to tell this story, and I'm not letting this guy go to go to jail for me. So fantastic. This guy sold me a bottle because I said, "Hey, I want to, I want to get the Thomas H. Handy there." And I want to get a shot of it. He was like, oh, it's unopened. And by this time, we were shooting sh shooting the shit, talking yeah, stories. Talking he was like, I don't know if I want to open it for that price. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. If, <laughs> if we're not opening the bottle, hey, I'll pay you the 25 uh, servings worth at, their, at the cost you're selling them for. And I'll just buy the bottle from it. And he was like, bet, let's do it. And so, so you I, bought it for 80 Eighty-five dollars? No, 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 no. Twenty-five 20, times thirty. Twenty-five times thirty. Oh, 20 times thirty. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, twenty-five times thirty. Yeah, and so we actually like bought the bottle right there, and then of course B negotiated them down, so it was like <laughs> six fifty or seven hundred or whatever it was, and so I have a, I have that bottle of Thomas H Handy, which both of you I think have had a, uh, I don't think I've a had drink handy. from. 
You haven't? You will no. you will at New Year's. I will at New Year's. <laughs> nice. Very Wait, nice. are we do I bring my angels in me? Or now, is that the hundredth I'm gonna be real right here because me and Anthony have talked about this, but we haven't uh, assaulted you with this information oh. yet. Assaulted. Okay. You that's can't a bring start. any liquids onto the plane with you. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Because we're going to fill up two liter size quart sized bags of alcohol for you to bring back with you. And we don't know how that's gonna look yet or what's going to happen. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to have two quart sized plastic baggies filled with alcohol. Two. two. Well, what's so that? He's talking about so you bag? and Mel. Yes, you and Mel. You can't bring any other liquids, by the way, because we're gonna fill up two bags. Toothpaste, <laughs> shampoo, condition. No, fuck all of if that. Specific, uh, <laughs> but my wife has me. We'll shampoo. buy it. I'll we'll, buy it. We'll I don't. On it. I'll go to. Yes. I'll go to the store. We will buy we'll everything you need. Ready to go. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Full size bottles, even. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't know how that's gonna work with my wife, but we'll see what we can get done. You might <laughs> hey. want to put that in the chat so we can go. Ahead hey, and see it hey. <laughs> you're getting two quart bags. <laughs> Of alcohol. Two quart bags? Because yes. you can put liquids in a quart size bag, right? Yes. So you take on the plane and, and they can be alcohol in the well, those we, little vials. we think they can be alcohol and there's no issues. There is no law or F uh, uh, FCC regulation that we could find in their entire rule book that says otherwise. <laughs> so yeah. but, now yeah. Yeah. We do know that you can't drink any of that alcohol on the plane. That, no, that, that. that checks out. You have to check it. No, well, no. No, no you can't check it either. No, you, you can't. Ch you, can't you can't check, check it, it because checked bags. Check bottles that are unopened. Yes, they have to be unopened, tax stamped bottles to be to able be to be Got checked. You. So you have to put open the vials, it. but you can't, <laughs> you can't drink it. And so, will it all get confiscated? Will you be put in a holding oh cell for a day? God. I don't oh know. God. I don't know what will happen I'm so to you, Nat. I'm but so terrified. that's what you got. Gonna, I, you guys are going to have to get this cemented. I don't know about you, but I've been watching the news. You're going to have to get that sorted all the way out. <laughs> Absolutely every, not. Everything that I've read checks out. Okay. It, it, everything that I can find says it is entirely fine. You just can't drink any alcohol you bring on the plane with you. So the liquid has to be small enough to be able to be carried onto the plane. I have not... I have three ounce bottles specifically okay. for this. So okay. you'll get three ounce bottles. So they'll be under the 3.4 ounces. Okay. And you can bring any number of vials up to 3.4 ounces as long as they fit in a quart size baggie and <laughs> so we're gonna make it really easy for tsa because we're gonna just put them in a quart size baggie so yeah. so and we'll we'll have it with the the court stamp and everything on it and we're gonna fill that sucker yeah. to the brim yeah yeah so it's <laughs> it's 3.4 ounces or 100 milliliters or less is okay. the rule okay. yes yeah I believe and they wouldn't say you can't drink it on the plane if you couldn't bring it on the when plane. When do you guys well, discuss they this? They do they do actually me, like <laughs> they do actually say you can't drink alcohol. That is a different FCC regulation. That makes sense. You can't drink alcohol that you bring because you can't buy alcohol in the uh store there and open yeah. it on the plane. Yeah. Makes sense. I don't know how it's going to get on the plane with with it being an actual bottle of liquor. I guess we have to tell them it's not liquor. I would not say anything and plead okay. the fifth. Okay. Maybe we should include some toothpaste. That ah! <laughs> Just saying. We're going to label them as natural oils. I don't know if we should. Hold up. <laughs> hold up. We're on the street. Everybody be cool. <laughs> Wait, no, no, that's okay. Because, like, I have a beard shampoo that is bourbon. Yeah. So the natural oil, it, you use it yeah. in your beard, Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. Anthony. You don't drink it. It's it's a topical. It's for your. It's topical. It's topical. Yeah. It's topical. Yeah. 
Guys, I'm before, not going to lie before to you, TSA. Before you go on the plane. <laughs> no, you, I'm not. Before you go on the plane, we're going to pour bourbon all over yes. your beard so you smell I like am, it. I am not telling you <laughs> to lie to TSA. I'm telling you to withhold the information from That's TSA. Fair. It's That's totally fair. different. It's totally different. <laughs> totally different. Uh, like, oh, I, uh, my, my friends gave me some, some products. Natural oils. Natural oils. Natural liquids. Natural liquids. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh god, I don't want to be arrested. Hold up. There is definitely oil. Nervous. That's where the tears come from. Yes. Okay, we're going to Now, okay. now here's okay. here's the thing, Nat. I can guarantee you won't get arrested. <laughs> so Okay, that's good. You won't get arrested. Mm. The worst case scenario is that they they, confiscate all they, of it. they throw away the alcohol. Oh, that is the worst god. case That'd scenario. Be sad. It would be sad, so sad as all get out. But I feel like we have to risk it because I have like 40 episodes worth of alcohol to give you <laughs> and anthony has some so like we have to try this because yeah. because otherwise yeah. we have to drive to texas and i'm okay with doing well, that, that that next con yes oh yeah What's that's the right con? they have they have a new There's convention a new con that the thing is at, that yeah true dungeon true dungeon true, by the oh, way true yeah, dungeon yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the anime thing yeah. or something like by that. By the way, oh, not not sponsored, but if you if you buy stuff from TD Tavern, uh maybe I'll get some kickback for it. So Wait, 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 wait. What's the what's the convention called? Um It's let's see. True Because if it's the recent one that I've heard of, heard of we, we may be dodging some some scandalous stuff happening. <laughs> Oh, Scandalous man. in the sense of there being some lewd things being wow. displayed. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. The, con? The, the con that I know of that's coming up, mm. well, sorry, that like just had its inaugural, I guess, is like specifically lewd themed. Dude, there is some this really is a... lewd cons out there. Like... You go to a generic convention, and there is some stuff that you would never. I think. was about to say, for sure. Uh, for sure. Cosplay no. has gone down some weird routes. Recently. It's not it's, even, it's, guys. It's <laughs> not even cosplay. It's like, so it's, it's <laughs> now nah, it is it's animators. It's artists. It's it's the oh, it's I the see. full. I see. It's like oh, urethane. So much. Nat, <laughs> it will be San Japan. Okay. Which is the largest anime and gaming Sand convention Japan. in South Texas. Okay, so no. Yeah, we're It's good. at the uh, Henry B. <laughs> Gonzalez Convention Center in San Antonio. So the same one we went to. This mm -hmm. time it'll just be anime and gaming. Uh, okay. It's They're pretty much taking the place of the PAX, uh, South. Of PAX South. But they're not affiliated they're with not PAX. PAX South. Yeah. Uh, it will be Labor Day weekend. Someday, mm. someday, can we get like a counter where it's like, how many times does one of our one of us not able to say the word and then the other person says it? <laughs> what, dude, like finishing other people's sentences is like, it's my love language. I do love it to my it. mom all the time. It's insane. Ash, put, put, put your lewd cosplay lewd away. The, put, put your put your lewd stuff away, there, Ash. This, this, is, a, away. this, this is a podcast of the of the. Well, I can't say it. No, it's not. The, the, it's not a podcast. I'm, I'm scared to take now take now, my wife on on road, on trips now because last time we were talking about going to Japan and she was like, "Just let me loose." You know who <laughs> will be at this convention though, Nat? Who? Tokyo Machine. <laughs> Tokyo Machine. Have you have you heard any of his music? I don't think I have. Ooh, you'll probably like Tokyo Machine. I'll check out I'll check out Tokyo Machine. Yeah, he's pretty good. But he's playing. Slushy is playing. Let's see. With uh, it's mostly voiceovers, voice actors, yeah, that type of thing for yeah, anime. Yeah. And I got it you. is going Ash, to be put a away your goddamn hentai tentacles. <laughs> it, will, it will be a fairly small uh, convention, all things considered. However, the most notable thing is that True Dungeon will be there, which is, by the way, for audience, that is the shirt that I'm wearing. It is a live D&D &D escape room adventure, essentially. But they will be at San Japan this year, Labor Day weekend, for anybody who wants to go. 
I, I usually go to, to Gen Con and Game Hall Con and Origins. And audience, if you ever want a permanent location for True Dungeon, uh, help us start our own distillery because be we will host one. I will definitely yes. do that for sure. <laughs> yes. Oh man, I'll never get over the freaking touchstone puzzle. Oh man, that was so good. good. Oh, that was good. So good. That, that was, was clutch, cool. Ash. That was that real was clutch. clutch. Uh, oh. Hey, did hey. y'all see what what I said about St. Augustine? No. Apparently in Florida, it's easy to get a distiller's license. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. I was trying a bourbon from St. Augustine and I heard about it. It was like, it's like 800 bucks. Really? Wow. Yeah. 800 bucks to go ahead and become a distillery? In and Florida. It, you, you just have to source everything back over to Florida because nobody's, probably, nobody's, yeah. nobody's, brewing, nobody's distilling anything in Florida. I was about to yeah, say, I think, I think the problem is that the, the weather there is not conducive it's to not distilling. Conducive at all. Oh, the bourbon I had wasn't bad. It was good. You'd, you would have to. Oh, uh, I don't doubt that there can be good bourbon, but we'd probably have to do it very high tech. We'd probably yeah. need the Rick Houses like Ardstown where yeah, they're, cli they're fully, fully climate, climate controlled, controlled. Yeah. But where and we control the climate. And that's crazy. Money. That's millions of dollars. No, dude, I know exactly where we go. We put our Rick houses below the ice rinks in every hockey stadium. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> Easy been, peasy. You well, well, well you got to remember, though, Anthony, we want the change in temperature, not the... Well, sometimes they play the basketball. Stagnation. Yes. Sometimes they play basketball. Anthony. Instead of hockey. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> never, never change, Anthony. It'll work out. It'll so, work out. So what have y'all been playing this week? How's the how's the gaming life? I started a really cool new game last night. Oh, I'm shrouded. Oh, I heard about that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Valheim on steroids. That's what I've There's heard. An actual skill tree. There's magic chests. The crafting is incredible. Like, sorry, the house building is incredible. You can build a hobbit hole. You can actually build an underground home. By the way, uh, sorry, derailing entirely. Uh, speaking of houses, did y'all see the reveal? There was an announcement. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. In I 2025, did. autumn. Yeah. And they're saying that and they're probably gearing up that if you pre-order, you get access. It's it's For those that don't know, it's World of Warcraft is finally yes. bringing player housing. Yes, World of Warcraft finally. is finally bringing player housing. So I'm glad you bring that up. Because w after Ash and I played our first session of Enshrouded, I looked at her and I was like, I think this is what's missing for me in so many RPGs. Now, I wouldn't count an RPG that is like a movie, you know, like a, a, a movie experience. That's different. But like a metaphor? An a MMO, metaphor. like World of Warcraft, a cooperative game, a single player game where it's an RPG and like open world, like Witcher or Skyrim, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You are kind of asking your audience, the player, to dive deep into this world and feel like they're a part of this world and just immerse themselves in your world. Play that role, because it's a role-playing game. And I think there's no better way to do that than immediately allow someone to start building their own home, their own base, because now you are attaching yourself to something you were expressing yourself within that world and i don't know for, for, at least for me there's no like better way to engage you yeah yeah and i think that's why i like star citizen so much i don't get to build my base yet but when i play star citizen the ship i am in is my home it is my attachment i'm like i love this ship this ship is so cool there's this there's that it's so like insanely intricate it's not just like generic and weird it's like well thought out i think that's where it is and i think they they're asking you to do it with your character in most games with just your character but it's like it's what well, i mean you make your them look character and... doesn't isn't the world yeah yeah i i know i agree yeah. i agree there is no better way to immerse somebody in a world than giving the player the ability to interact and change that world permanently and the easiest way to do that is instance player housing it's why mm -hmm. like runescapes player housing 
EverQuest 2's player housing are noticeable ones that were just game changing because they actually have interaction mechan mechanisms that are designed into them, especially RuneScape. Uh, RuneScape's is actually probably my favorite player housing for a number of reasons. But most notably is that the housing itself is a gameplay element. And so interacting and changing the world by building this house inside of it is like low effort, just good. But I will say it is really hard to do it in a way that doesn't just belittle the player and so my biggest concern mm. with world of warcraft is that they kind of mm. have this low-hanging fruit where they give you like some blueprints of houses and they're like hey you have like 15 different houses so you could choose from or yeah maybe it's a hundred but in reality it's like three with a bunch of minor variations you know and then they give you some trophies and things that you can place in predetermined areas. Like a great example is like the Black Desert Online housing, mm -hmm. right? The bl best thing about Black Desert Online housing is the fact that you have to go to the different towns and look at the different houses to find which one you like. But then yeah. once you actually have it and start interacting with the house itself, it feels hollow. It doesn't do anything. Yes. Like there's there's no Dude. feeling of like you actually making a space for your for yourself. It's already been yeah. made for you. You're just you're just unlocking spots to be filled. And then you Something have the best player housing that has ever been made in a video game being V Rising. Yeah. It's really cool. Like, yeah. That is the inf like if they could have found a way to make that so that you could see people's castles and have instances so that you don't have this server-based gameplay, it would literally have been yeah. the perfect MMO player housing setup. And mm. one of the big things that they do, and that happened in Entrouded and happens in many games, is that you're almost immediately able to do it. Like, it Make takes it some time to get into it in, in, you know, I mean, RuneScape's an older game, but, like, RuneScape takes a while to get to your house. And, and there's other games, I can't remember off the top of my head, where it just takes a while to get there. Yeah. Um, but being able to establish that connection to the house so quickly is yeah. kind of important to me. 100%. I think that player housing has to be a part, if you do it correctly, if you do it in a way that is novel interesting and like value add it needs to be a part of the core gameplay loop and that part of the gameplay loop needs to be fun and enjoyable to interact with and that's why v rising in my opinion is the best player housing experience in a game because mm -hmm. it is like they made a game by going we spent years designing a combat system that is fun and awesome. Let's make a way to have player housing wars. And that was their secondary mechanic. Their secondary mechanic yeah. was literally make houses to fight against each other. Everything have else houses fight each is other. secondary yeah. to that. Now, arguably, that they just needed, in my opinion, one more step to make it instanced instead of so you could have permanence to it instead of having these restarting things that essentially killed off the player base. But, but the player housing part of that is not the problem. That part is phenomenal. Like, perfect in a lot of ways. So, an iteration on it that I really like is something that Bitcraft is doing, and then I don't think it's Ashes of Creation. It could be Ashes of Creation, but there's a similar game that is coming out where you can take a plot of land and this is now yours within the world anywhere in the world so imagine you're in world of warcraft and you just go to the barons and you're like this is now my land well get out <laughs> you yeah you can only keep it as long as you maintain it just like in v rising you have to keep the heart alive right if you don't have enough resources you're not playing enough it comes up for grabs people can take it that is then, uh ashes of creation by the way 
Yeah, yeah, it that's is. their okay. freehold system. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. And especially if you add another level of it, which is like uh, basically high sec, high security, low security, and medium security. Um, so the idea is like you have the instance housing in a city, right? Where everyone shares the same apartment or house on top of each other, stuff like that permanent you can have it forever like you didn't just claim some land that wasn't that you were the first person to get there it's like multiple people have the same house um kind of like new world but then outside of that you have places where there's pvp enabled for your home just mm. like sorry that was a loud noise you there ash everything all right <laughs> are you dead jim <laughs> Are you dead? But yeah, I like the idea that you can put your house somewhere in the world, not just in an instance location that you share it with other people like New World and B-Rising. Well, this was one of the, the reasons everybody was so excited about EverQuest Next, mm -hmm. which I, I kept up with it a ton because I'm an EverQuest <laughs> junkie, but EverQuest Next sold this idea and they made a lot of money doing it they sold this idea of essentially a an mmo minecraft where you can own plots of land and fully customize and build these buildings mm -hmm. not even just not even just like lots of land but actually having full scale cities built by the players and designed mm -hmm. and all of this world kind of built up and they implemented the building aspect of that game and released it of course as a alpha demo and then of course they made a shit ton of money off of that and then ran with the money essentially mm. now everybody was super upset with this yep. vaporware idea obviously yep. To the point where it killed the idea in its entirety, but man, the the idea the was exciting. Idea is a good one. Yeah. Yes. This idea of and here's the thing that I am actually surprised about that people haven't done yet. I am surprised that Microsoft hasn't used the Minecraft engine to design an MMO. Yeah, it's already an MMO, pretty much. But not an MMO. It You're is. Right. Yeah. It is a an a a, a a lobby server based multiplayer game, and some people take that to insane degrees by buying super expensive servers and being able to have hundred people in these servers. But the fact that Microsoft or one of these other companies hasn't created a use that system to create an MMO is kind of surprising to me because the especially for Microsoft considering they have the code base right I I listened to an interview with Jason Schreier today talking about how the ability for studios and production companies to be able to put out video games of quality has been severely hampered by a more capitalistic viewpoint of how are we going to make money off of this? hundred percent. And it's because they, it's become more expensive too. Like, yeah. And there's a lot more people to pay. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. It's it's so I I don't want to be jaded in the sense that like I'm like oh cool, cool. of course there's there's no uh, housing in this game yet there's of course this it's there it's been held b behind from some kind of like actual um, game type because because of money but there's there's also a, a piece of me that's like yeah Minecraft is great for what it is and i don't think anybody expects anything more of it i think that the toolbox is there for people to Dude. see how far their imagination goes and they already have that kind of that that housing aspect to it 
So I don't know if like I'm sure that there are a, a number of people who are like, yeah, it would be great to be all in one world and everybody be able to claim a piece of land. But I don't know if that's intrinsic to my Minecraft ethos of existing. I think it's supposed to be a canvas for your for yourself. It's not supposed to be a canvas that you share. Dude, you you gave me an incredible idea. Um, so. Wolverine and Deadpool movie that just came out. Deadpool and Wolverine. I keep saying it yeah. backwards. Yeah. Cost them two hundred million dollars to uh -huh. produce that movie. Uh -huh. And we all know that there's a lot of work in movies. They can take two to four years, a lot of editing, and there's a lot of work. Now, Star Citizen has raised seven hundred million dollars in what, twelve or fourteen years? Somewhere around there. Uh-huh. They have spent so much less money than Where's Deadpool and Wolverine for something that is so much more complex. You said 700 million. So, so just wait, two, 200 million for Deadpool. That's for what Deadpool, you said. 700 million Seven. for Star Citizen. And you're saying that they've spent so much less than Deadpool. Because they've been doing this for 12 or so years. Got you. Deadpool okay. and, Wol and Wolverine was like the, two to four years, right? Yeah. And on top of all of that, there are so many more people, so many more uh, like areas of expertise required to make a video game than a movie. Because they're not just making Star Citizen, they're making Squadron 42. Squadron 42 has, you know, a whole bunch of big name actors in it. It's a freaking movie in a game itself. And it's longer you know, than a movie, because mm -hmm. the gameplay is going to be, who knows, like 28, 42 hours, maybe, I don't know. So it's just, it's incredible to me that people will criticize a game development company with no backing except for its backers, no publisher, you know, for having raised so much money without producing a game when the amount of money they are spending is small like compared to movie producers and people writing software for businesses and construction projects and stuff like that. Like I, it's, I think the thing that you have to, that is hard to put into numbers is the cost of advertising, which games typically don't put a lot of money into. AAA titles sometimes do, but even then their budgets are very small. But a good example uh, to kind of put it into like uh, it, like an interesting way of putting it for Deadpool 2, they got, um, oh, oh my gosh, what's his name? Brad Pitt or three frames oh, yeah. of the movie <laughs> or whatever it was two seconds it's or two something seconds. like that yeah yeah now they had to pay him a yeah. ridiculous amount of money to do that mm -hmm. a percentage mm -hmm. of the entirety of their budget now in a lot of ways you are paying for the name advertisement of brad Pitt, and that's that's kind of a good way to think about how actors and actresses are right in the sense that if you're paying a main uh, an a-list actor you're paying for their audience you're paying for the advertisement that they give mm -hmm. in a lot of ways and they're doing that in star citizen because they have henry cavill and other big name actors i i and agree i'm not saying they at, aren't just add a number on top of the 200 million Deadpool and Wolverine's marketing was 100 million. So yeah. 300 million total. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Like, yeah, they 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 pay a lot in like movies in general pay an absurd amount in marketing in in those types of ways that games I feel do not. Yeah. From a percentage perspective. But it's just crazy. Like, okay, three hundred million dollars on a movie that you spend twenty bucks on to watch for two hours, 
and then the amount of criticism that a video game company receives. Oh yeah, I mean, if we're talking about value add propositions, I have never had a movie that had, uh, there has not been a single movie in my life that had, that has had more value add than the best games I've played. Fair. It's not even close. And I'm not Except saying that to say for... that movies are bad or that I didn't love a lot of movies. I'm just saying their value add just physically can never match up to games. I think the only one you could never measure is the Barbie movie. <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta do them like that anthony i feel why you gotta be like that even then i feel there are games that could do that message that like here's the thing if they oh, yeah. created a barbie game that had the same message and did just as like did it just as much merit as the barbie movie did the mm -hmm. game would have more value is the is the thing that i'm getting at less so yeah. than oh, like yeah there's a singular movie that might affect one or more people more than any game has affected them. I'm just getting at the yeah. idea that like the medium of games just is not parallel games to the medium things, of movies. Games can teach you things that you could never learn without experiencing them in real life. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing that I have that I always reference is I played, what is it? Um, Animal Crossing new horizons or whatever with my wife and a bunch of people from work and eventually we figured out how to game the stock market yeah i became the turnips yeah the turnips i became filthy rich the and turnips. Once I was filthy rich suddenly all the everything became meaningless yeah and i got a life lesson of if you have a shit ton of money everything goes to shit man it's like i was like nothing and I was is like, worth yeah. any worth yeah that's so why i like dude i yeah. don't want to make two million dollars a year or yeah. something like that i just want to make enough money where like i could i could see something i really want and i could stay for it and i can get it yeah now the oh my gosh i had i had a point and, and it just slipping away from me slowly come on brain it's in the fourth dimension oh my goodness you got find this it. kid uh, we brought forever. it up previously on the podcast, actually. Senua's Sacrifice. Oh, Senua's Sacrifice. Yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah, is yeah, Hellblade. the single best way, in my opinion, to teach somebody about... Um, mental illness. Mental illness. I, there is no better experience to... like If you put that game in front of a 15-year-old, 16-year-old... It would teach them more about mental illness than every single teacher in their life could possibly yeah, do. I mean, you have some you have some fantastic teachers, but you do. No, you're right. You you're do, right. but right. the you're experience right. of dealing with that is not something that I feel is teachable through Therapy. through ge like general means. Anthony, guys, what you got? Guys, if you ever need surgery, if anybody in your entire life, if anybody you know ever needs surgery, you have to ask your doctor, your surgeon, one question. And if they say no, you find a different one. Because the stats don't lie. Do you play video games? Because if a surgeon plays video games, their like, success rate of surgeries is up 25 percent compared really? to surgeons that don't dude that's a fat buff yeah <laughs> it's a, nuts that's a fat that's buff. crazy like humanity wise that's like they that's should be of. required to play yeah. video games <laughs> all surgeons should have to go to work and spend like the first two hours playing league <laughs> like speaking oh of goodness. league Hold on. Oh my Speaking goodness, the way. new Arcane season is so oh, freaking good. I haven't watched good. it. No. Oh Anthony, my goodness. What? This Look, is the perfect it's been time. Long weekend. Anthony, Anthony, it's so Anthony good. I'm going to watch the last act on my flight to Mexico City this weekend. Wait, have you not Wait, have you not, wait, have you you not seen the last movie? act? I've seen the la I've seen the no. latest act. Wait, you wait. have? You have yes. no way that oh, you're, you're gonna watch the third act. I'm gonna watch on the, the third plane. act on the, the first plane. two acts I, are already out. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness, bro, Nat, that final Eric. scene, <laughs> that final scene, Nat. Oh my oh. goodness, oh. 
She's never gonna be the same. Eric. Oh, it hurts so bad. She's never gonna be the Eric, same. Wait, wait, okay, oh, dude. God. After I need to leave for a moment, like no, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're okay. We're okay. We're, we're okay. okay. We're okay. Okay, oh we're my not, god! But, Jesus Christ! It hurts, dude. I I cried t like on this. Uh, I cried on episode. Did you all rewatch? Full five, and I cried on episode six. Oh my goodness! Did it... you all rewatch? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You rewatched yeah. before? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you need I was to. About it. But it, I There's mean, not it's... a lot of things that you sneak up with. But no. there I feel are. Like had... It is. There's it a... is one of. At least right now, I'm waiting for Act Three. There's like, there's a lot of setup going on. Here's you know a, why we so, didn't watch yeah. it? We didn't watch it because it makes us want to work out, and it was really late, and we were really fucking tired. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> okay, there, there is, show. there is one, one or two episodes where I was like, this is interesting, but I, I don't know if it'll be able to hold through. It was like. The first two episodes, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The second two episodes, like episodes three and four, mm -hmm. were interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they ended act two with a bombshell two episodes. So, Bro. Anthony, you're in for a roller coaster. It's great. It's going to be so a and good. And here's the thing to alleviate no, you're you're, your fear. You're fine. You're, you're, fine. you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. We're not going to spoil anything. Yeah. No spoilers. But to alleviate your fears... The the middle two episodes that I'm saying Anthony. were eh, were actually were they needed to be there they needed to be how they were yeah Anthony come on dude we're not spoiling anything we promise we promise but yes Arcane we'll is amazing real quick. it's going to make me want to dye my Arcane hair pink was amazing. again it oh. might want it might make you want to dye your hair black oh I'm pretty sure season one made me dye my hair pierce my own ears and work twice as much yeah um so. If see so, if season one was inspirational and kind of like you, you seeing towards the future, I feel like season two is is like going from your twenties to your thirties. Here's the thing, season two. I I did not know going into season two how they were going to match up to the first season, but they're mm -hmm. they are just kicking it out of the park. Easily. They're, they're fucking sl they're slaying. Slaps. They're slaying. It slaps. slaps. It so slaps. Good. Okay, so there are some pacing issues, I will just say, but I don't care. Yeah. I yeah. don't care. Yeah. Like, just like, like, Eric. Don't say anything. <laughs> Eric. Oh my God. I have so many theories. Next, like yeah, these yeah. next three episodes will literally make and break what's going to happen. I don't think I'm. Here's the thing, Nat. I don't know if I'm going to see them until I'm back from India. So I can't talk to anybody about it. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Oh. oh. I'll have to talk to Anthony about it once he watches season two. Oh, yeah. Sorry, uh, the, the the episodes. We're not saying anything anymore. I promise. We're done. We're well, done. We never We're said done. anything, really. We really didn't. I think we did a really good job avoiding spoilers. I agree. We did no spoilers. Dude, season two is just is a banger. It's, it is a banger. It's really good. It like I, I was watching somebody who I actually take uh, their opinion pretty pretty seriously. Their uh, their name's Daniel Green on uh, YouTube. They are a book a book reviewer and just like just generally like a good person, honestly. If he, if he ever watches this, just know that like, I love your work. Um, I haven't read your uh, Neon Ghost book yet, but I, it's on my TBR. Um, but uh, yeah, he was saying that like the pacing was something that really kind of marred the first two episodes for him, and I was and like it was the first time that I was like. I get your opinion. It's so gas. I yeah. I don't care. First two episodes were amazing. The 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 only the only I only have, and we'll talk about this. It we we I have to talk about it in depth when we have all seen all of when it. We all see it, yeah. Because I yeah. think it could solve the middle two episodes. The middle two episodes, yeah, yeah, are great. They're okay. Yes. They're okay. Yes. They're okay. They're yes. okay. Like even even with the major event for uh, episode three going into episode four, you're still like, 
Yeah. Okay. Where are we going? You yes. are muted. Oh, come on. Yeah, he muted. Okay. Him. Of course he did. We're done. Oh my god. You can un Okay, we're done. So Oh, I pressed the wrong mute button. Wait. To, to move us on to something else. I didn't play anything. Wait. Wait. I yeah. must explain. Okay. I had to mute you guys because uh you know how I sometimes have the ability to not hear spoilers? Well, I know y'all so well that it's it's much harder. <laughs> <laughs> because you might try to not spoil and be vague, and it's I, like we, I can I literally read we what didn't even you were... we didn't even speak about events. Yeah, like literally, yeah. we were. It just doesn't talking matter about when you started numbers. saying certain things. Like I can, like it's. I had it was it was a struggle to stop my brain from deducing who you were talking about based on who you like and people, your. Though we didn't talk about people. Either, you said I promise. her. All you had to do was say her. There are multiple you won't know. hers. There's like, there's like there, there's the entire main hers. cast is women. There's Ambessa. There's there's Kate, Look, like it, there's a ton of people. Look, there are the like powers of deduction suck. I'm okay, just saying okay, right now there are like fair. twelve different main storylines with women this season. Yeah. So you it you are not going to be able power. to figure it out. Yeah, it is very women centric. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, it's, guys. Uh, so. I discovered that the booklet is kind of funny and cringy because it's like you're in the hotel. Oh no, yes. I read that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I figured that out. You're in your oh, third God. day and they I invite you it. to it's yeah. so awkward. It's it like is, ASMR. I'm, I'm not here yeah. for it. Well, well anyway. Yes. Um, Interesting. So <laughs> this week I went on I started my journey. Mm. I have started to fall into the deep pit of that is Factorio. Oh no! On your PC or on your uh, Steam Deck? <laughs> so I have been doing mostly Steam Deck. Really? I have done a little bit of PC. Well, I wanted to get used to it because I I wanted to be able to go into the plane because of course I have like twenty four hours of flying this weekend. And oh, he looks so excited about it. There, there, there is very much a thing where when you have a Steam Deck and you start a new game, if you think you want to play it at all on your Steam Deck, start there. Yeah, because always it will probably be better on your mm. computer. Oh, but yeah. if you learn on the Steam Deck first, it will it's like just gonna get even yeah. better. And so yeah. that's that's what I did. I got it so that I set everything up. I got the, you know, Steam Deck has, so it's also my first time playing the Steam Deck. So for anybody who doesn't Factorio know. Factorio is your first game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wow. started with Factorio. So the, the Steam Deck has on its store, you can actually go to the game that you're playing, go into the menu, and they have profiles. And people can create different profiles for yeah. setting up the controller, which yeah. is not really a necessity for a lot of games that I've seen. Mm-hmm. For Factorio, it is a must-have because yeah. there are a thousand different buttons for Factorio and to be able to do anything efficiently or without like a lot of extra work, you have to set up a lot of stuff. So essentially, this guy set up a profile with, that uses all the different touch controls to be able to do like mouse and keyboard movement type of deal to be able to hotkey everything and do everything pretty quickly. Uh -huh. And has all this stuff set up kind of cool. So I've been doing Factorio and it is, I have played a little bit of Factorio before. So I played in the alpha for people who don't know. This was like alpha. This was before he released like early access on Steam. He had it as like an available thing and I played it. And back then it was not what it is now. It is it's not what it was. By far the best iteration of an improvement automation dopamine rush game <laughs> in existence. And I say that with no with all candor. Like I do all not nuts. I do not no, think no it is possible for another game to give you the dopamine rush or automation and like solving problems 
that this game does. The only thing that can even come close is like solving real world coding problems. Like you're a fucking nerd, dude. This game <laughs> is Ow. the best game to teach somebody problem solving and like circuitry and you won't even know that you're doing it. It is amazing how good they have made this game. Oh, you got it skinned. You got the D brand Oh yeah, I got skin. a D brand skin and I got the D brand rugged case. So mine is thicker than most and it can nice. kickstand itself. They have a special kickstand... edition out right now. Man, I was so upset now. Do you know that like days after I bought Dude, mine, they released the white so version? Expensive. Now, Eric, Eric, don't be pissed off. Buy one for your wife. She's she's not going to use the Steam ah. Deck. Anyways, but I wanted to highlight because Eric was talking about the controller profiles. And so there's a lot of competitive uh, handhelds, right? But they're, but they're all Windows based and arguably worse, even if they have faster hardware you know like a stronger uh mm -hmm. car or something like that higher horsepower yeah so the biggest thing is these touch pads here mm -hmm. and the touch sensitive um analog sticks they actually yep. know if you're touching them now with like these touch pads there's so much you can do mm. you can have an overlay on the screen come up when you touch it and you can have like eight maybe even more different uh buttons to choose from and let go for like a radial and stuff like that and then on the back of course you have two buttons on either side the paddles the yeah. paddles and the just yeah. flexibility of it is so incredible especially for complex games like factorio i, I, I was about to say factorio like the yeah, profile kills it yeah question screen size wise you guys have all played on a switch before it's like, how does the how does the experience compare to yours? So I don't know if Eric has his, but his is actually bigger. The new one is bigger. Yeah, I have okay. the OLED one, and the OLED one is insanely good. And I, I like it's hard to tell, but like the blacks are actually black, right? Mm -hmm. And it looks fantastic. Dude, Eric, bring yours so Eric can look at both of ours. So Nat yeah. can look at both of ours. I was going to, but did here, I, I wanted to show Eric you this. Bring yours so Eric can look at both so of ours. So if you yes, look you at did. Factorio, you absolutely when did. I press <laughs> onto this touchpad, it has different slots Whoa. for yours the is thing. Even, yours is 16. Yeah, so I can actually go and select all of these things. That's and all really of good. these have different menus. So like if I want to go into here and do the tech tree, the I can like showing up on your camera is nutty yeah. and then of course this so good, is dude. actually my mouse so i can like go over and mouse over things right and it has all the different things this profile is really nice but this little menu is the magic of this profile mm -hmm. so it has like copy and paste functionality on these and all kinds of stuff dude i played world of warcraft on mine bro i okay. would not <laughs> but i did I would not. It's just it's just incredible what you can that do. That is actually, you know what? That will be my little game thing for you guys because I know we're coming coming to a close. Um, yeah, I think I'm done with WoW, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I I still uh, I as a creation. Let's go. I still stand by my opinions as I have for no, so many weeks. I'm not saying that it's not a good game to play for it's for those fun, for, but it's but, it's fun. But, it's and I got but. here's the way I think about it. Out of this patch, I got what I wanted out of it. And when they release a new raid, I'm probably going to do the new raid. I'm already geared for it. So, like, mm -hmm. the next raid comes out, I'll go do the normal raid, go do the heroic raid, and then I'll take another break. Like, the raiding is always what I enjoy most in WoW. I think it's the best feature. Healing in a raid is just so much fun. And there's no other game mm. that does it that I come to my second project that I started this week, which is creating a mobile game for healing. Uh, which That's cool. I have cool. uh, I have started development on, and I have it so that you can is do it little gonna abilities. Just healing, or is it going to be like just in general adventure? But it's going to be styled after. It's going to be specifically you're playing the healer for a group or raid, 
and I have it so that it's going to be like Pokemon style. You're going to see the little monster at the top half of the screen. Oh, that's cute as fuck. He's going to do like uh, little motions and attacks, little pixel oh, art that's attacks. that's actually super cute. And then the bottom is going to be the health bars. The middle section will be the health bars. And then yeah. the bottom will be different abilities that you can select from. You click on the ability and then click on the person to start casting the heal. And you got to keep everybody alive as they kill the little monster. That's hell yeah. I'd play that. Yeah. When that game comes out, I want there to be a statistic that shows the number of like healers in WoW, yeah. like in number of copies sold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Direct correlation. Yeah. Direct correlation. Oh my god. Yeah. Like, but I would I would love to say that WoW was able to like reinvigorate my gaming like uh, hobby. Guys, it kind of you know, killed it. Oh man! Like you know, I was, I was like getting into games again. I was trying out Hades. Like it, like I was really into Hades, and then Prince of Persia came around. And I started playing per Prince of Persia. I have friends who are playing video games that I that I talk to on a regular basis. But like, ever since I started, like, ever since I binged th that one time playing WoW over the weekend, it killed it. It killed See, all the momentum. Man, I I don't think it killed it for me because I I think it reinvigorated the developer in me because I I feel like the the thing that I love about WoW is not being done in another game. Mm -hmm. And that is sad to me. But I will say Factorio like reinvigorated it a ton for me. Factorio is just an amazing game. An amazing yeah. dude. Yeah. I, I just want us to try Ash of Creation because supposedly it's a sandbox MMO and has similarities to games oh, like World of Warcraft. The upcoming, the upcoming Ashes of Creation, you, and you yeah. can play the alpha right now. And, um, heard about that. But what's <laughs> interesting to me about the sandbox MMO aspect is that as an aspiring content creator, World of Warcraft has got nothing. Yeah, but if you have a sandbox garbage. situation of World of Warcraft in Ashes of Creation, and you can, like, be a pirate, basically, you know, be a highwayman and stand people up and take their stuff, that's interesting. That's cool stuff that you can throw on YouTube and people want to watch. Because yeah. it changes things up. But in World of Warcraft, we all experience the same thing. Exact thing. Yeah, garbage. I feel like in World of Warcraft, you have... Uh, three types of content creators that do well you have the professional esports raiders yep you have the hardcore players and you have the established personalities and no new content creator can get into wow content creation without putting an insane amount of work in and the yeah. work that you have to put in is more than the work you'd have to put in to get in with any other game that you would try to do. So, so why would you do it? So why yeah. would you do it? Unless you just love World of Warcraft, in which case you should do it as a hobby and it might work out. But like, just know that the work that you have to put in to make it in the, the WoW content creation is astronomical. Now, the only, ca the only caveat to that is the hardcore uh audience which you kind of missed the wave on is the only problem <laughs> yeah like if that's you already, that's that's gone and dead the kind of yeah but that was the one like if you wanted to get into wow content creation easily the hardcore was the way to do it because for about seven eight months until they killed health health odd even if you were a brand new content creator People love just watching new hardcore WoW clips. And if you mm. made it into a hardcore WoW death, uh, um, uh, what are they called? Compilation. All of a sudden, your viewers <laughs> went up by 10,000. So essentially, you were just playing that game to have a fun death. And then you would just keep playing it. And the minute you got that fun death, if you made it under that compilation, you went from two viewers to 5,000 and now all of a sudden yeah. you can start streaming 
hardcore other wow and other stuff and all you want to yeah. do and you have an audience now and that was that was it that was the best way into content creation when that was going on you know what's interesting is like my taste in video games has actually developed in the same line of what's actually interesting for content creators which is just that uniqueness so for a while it was apex legends right games like apex legends because the ending was pretty unique each game was decently unique there are similarities of course but being a battle royale different things happened and things would end differently almost every time mm. and then you get to games like sea of thieves where it's just a huge sandbox and unless you're just doing the same pve crap over and over again every interaction you have every adventure you go on can be completely unique as long as you're not avoiding other players and that's like what i want in an mmo too and hopefully ash's creation delivers on that yeah we'll see we'll see i don't know i'm gonna have to it's gonna have to be a special game that brings me back into, into video gaming again i thought i was good but I'm kind of listless at this point. I have we, a PS5. Gonna, dude, I have a gonna... PS. I have a PC that can run everything, but like it's just like it... I can. I can tell you what I'm excited for. Couch co-op in December. Oh, that that'll be fun, but that's not what I'm excited for. <clears throat> what I'm excited for comes out in uh, two days. It is a game exactly. I have been looking forward to for almost a decade, and that Jesus. is Stalker Two. The heart of Chernobyl. It is the game that Tar Escape from Tarkov was based on. It is the game that designed the hardcore FPS looter shooter. Uh, the original Stalker is probably the best done RPG loot shoot exploration game. Uh <laughs> Dude, and this is so great. Oh, no. I'm not... I'm not oh, shit. You're not old enough. <laughs> I didn't scroll down. <laughs> but uh, Stalker 2 looks so good. They've been showing off stuff for it for years. Uh, they've been talking about it for what so heck? long. Uh, it's done by a... Um, uh, GSC... Uh, which where are they based out of Ukraine? Um, but I have been excited for it for a long time. This is the game I have been looking forward to. The only downside is I won't be able to play it when it comes out because I'll be in India, and I don't like. I want to play this on a computer with a uh, keyboard and mouse because FPS games are. That's just how I play them, dude. On the Steam Deck. Gyro control. I'm not and flick stick. I, gyro control and flick stick. Hey, I'm not saying that's not a good way to do it. I'm just saying it it won't be the way that I do it. <laughs> uh, I do like that I'm not dropping any frames while sharing this, and that y'all didn't move at all without me having to change a scene. Yeah, same. OBS is still working perfectly for me. So. Uh, it, 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 now this isn't showing to the stream unfortunately because i don't have a um a scene oh, set up for it but i see so we can copy the link and create another scene switch yeah. to for yeah. future reference yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so Hopefully. next next time i'll be able to show this off by uh being yeah. able to copy this and have have something for it but this so the stream cool. is directly from your obs now not from theirs yes that's that's okay. the thing like yeah that's not doing it for me with this new setup i can uh i'm using obs directly instead of going through some other software so the that's streaming really cool is because based then, off of like us. you have the option of choosing whether or not to show people what i have started to share yeah i also have the option of doing that for my stream yep and then nat has to look at it if he's looking at the video <laughs> <laughs> unless you can hide it yeah no. i cannot yeah no this is this is definitely uh by the way just uh, the, i know we're wrapping it up we're using a new streaming software this is the first week but so far it seems to be 
it, it, uh, it wasn't, you know, a, a rocky takeoff, but well, it, it has a, a lot takeoff. of. It benefit. was the same issue I had on the other one. Yes. Yeah. Same right. issue, but this gave us the tools to actually see what was happening. Yeah, to realize what it could I have think been. I just, guys, I think I just need to find a game that I actually feel like attracted to that's going to make me play. Oh, that, I mean, that does, 100%. It doesn't do it for me, but 100%. yeah. Try and Shrouded. I'm not saying that it's not exciting. Like, it, I'm sure the game is nice, but. And Shrouded is on Not sale. to sound defeated. Not to sound defeated. It's more so just like. I'm wondering what next game is going to actually inspire me to play a video game again. There, there is one more that might be interesting for you. Mm -hmm. So this uh, this is the second game I'm excited for, The Stalker 2 being the first. Uh, if anybody remembers Pillars of Eternity by Obsidian Entertainment, by the way, Obsidian oh, Entertainment. Pillars of Eternity is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the people who did Fallout New Vegas, uh -huh. Pillars of Eternity, Outer Worlds, Tyranny, their next game um, is going to be coming out soon. And it is called... I gotta remember the name of it. Pillars of Eternity 2. Uh, no. It is the next series in the Pillars of Eternity line. But it's not called Pillars of Eternity, but it's in the same world. Avowed. It's called Avowed. Oh, I've heard of that before. And I feel like I have. Avowed looks really promising. Especially... One, because I, I just love Obsidian Entertainment's storytelling style, and I feel like they do such a good job with oh, story. Oh, Skyrim styled. It's uh, approach. Skyrim approach. So it's Skyrim plus combat mechanics mm -hmm. and magic mechanics, which I'm okay with. By the way, like I, I know a lot of people might think that that's a little simplistic, uh, but when looking at it, there are some cool depth things to it. But yeah. Really, this, this game well. just looks gorgeous, and I can't wait for the story that goes along with it. And it just looks really, really cool. Yeah, babe. So, this will be coming out in February of next year. Uh, so, a little bit longer of a wait, but I am super excited to play through this game. I think it'll be the spiritual uh, Elder Scrolls fall up follow up in a lot of ways i think it'll be the elder scrolls 6 that we want um instead of whatever <laughs> you know whatever elder scrolls 6 actually ends up being which i don't know that we know yet <laughs> <laughs> oh man you gotta get on my studio mode i'm already i've already got it i've already got the scene for the presentation now oh nice yeah, if you turn on studio mode, you can edit a scene before you transition it. Oh, yeah, so yeah, So you can yeah. leave the current scene on and fix things behind the scenes, which is my, my, really nice. My only problem is... I, I could do it pretty quickly. My only problem is that I have the... Um, I had, like, pre-set-up guideline spots or where it was in the scene but i guess i could do like a simple one pretty quickly yeah like just I align it to the right side duplicate your current scene then take all of us and shrink us and put us at the bottom yeah and, and then, then just put, put it at the a top new browser in the middle as big as you can fit with yeah. us all tiny at the bottom that's what i did yeah that's fair that's fair yeah but yeah, avowed. Interesting. I'm more curious about the other game you're talking about because Stalker too. Yeah, yeah that I, Tarkov like, was really cool. Yeah, but has fallen off. No, I definitely think you'll like Stalker two uh, a lot more than Avowed, uh, just considering your play styles. But I, I think this, this really looks like it's going to hit a lot of the buttons that Skyrim pressed with just upgraded stuff and a great story and like 
that style of thing. And I feel like we haven't had a good spiritual successor to that idea since Skyrim. Like, I don't feel like anybody's done something that felt like this. Um, and they haven't done it well, even if they've tried it. So, like, I'm excited to see where this goes, for sure. That's fair. And Obsidian Entertainment usually just knocks it out of the park. Their lowest rated one was, like, Outer Worlds, and I really didn't feel that Outer Worlds was bad in any way. I don't feel like it was... Yeah, it wasn't New Vegas. It wasn't Pillars of Eternity, but I think it was fun and Mm -hmm. uh, a good playthrough, so... Did Skyrim have housing fault? No. It came later. Later, okay. Yeah. It came part of the vampire expansion, right? Um Did it? I, don't know. I I feel like Or was it earlier than that? I feel like you could purchase properties from the, the base bat. game. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I was I stand corrected. Yeah, because mm-hmm. when you do the first Jarl's quest line, you get a home. Mm, you you right, unlock right, the right. ability to do a home. That's another interesting. Thing. I don't know if they do it particularly well in Skyrim, but if you do have a fairly on rails experience up to the point where now you show them, hey, you could go do random dungeons, or you could build a house, or you could do this. It's like you're potentially catering to some pretty different styles of gamer. Yeah. Gamers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Y'all right. should check out Enshrouded. Give it a shot. Yeah, I have wanted to try it's out Enshrouded. I just haven't got it's. It's, it's one of those that has just kept falling to the wayside. It plays well in the Steam Deck. Huh? Huh? Give yeah. it a shot. It's not officially supported, but it's in early access. And when you go play it, it's like very obvious that they are playing it. Yeah. Steam Deck and That's one of the only reasons that I haven't played it yet is the early access thing. I, I, I still have, I, I really just the way that I like to play games. And this is, this is a me problem, not an early access problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but I really like to just especially with how I get time to play games and there are so many games coming out that like I usually get one good opportunity to like engross in a game and then I don't know when the next opportunity for me to like fully engross myself in a game will be and Mm -hmm. so to fully engross myself in a game in early access I feel like does it a, a disservice because I want to play the game at what it thinks its best is which is what I consider the 1.0 release. Like I consider that the developer saying, I sign off on this being the experience that I want it to be. I would argue that 1.0 release for many games that are backed by passionate developers are not the best they think it can be. Oh, 100%. Simply good enough to release. And then 5, 10, 15 years later, like Terraria, now they're at like, it has reached its final form. I'm done. Yeah. I don't think, I think, I think I'm thinking about it less like that and more like this is them putting their stamp of approval on the experience feeling. Like it feels how I want it to feel, even if it's not perfect in every way. It's like, this is how the game should be played. Like the the mm-hmm. gameplay loop feels like it should. That's that's what I consider a 1.0. And I think most 1.0s kind of follow that idea, right? It's like if you play early access games, sometimes, but I think it's all of those pieces coming together. Like when Star Citizen releases a 1.0, it's not going to be as you describe. I think 100% it will be, right? No, It'll be every I, piece of the it game. Won't be because they just talked about it. They literally just did their like 1.0 presentation at the last con. Like, this is what we want for 1.0. We have defined what 1.0 is, but it doesn't include all of these things that we want in the game that everyone knows is important. But I think it includes everything that they want in the experience of the game. No, I think it includes, I think instead it includes everything to qualify as a game 
by other people's standards. What I'm getting at is that not their own. Maybe, maybe is what I'm getting at. What I'm thinking about as a 1.0 release is that there doesn't have to be future updates for but it to be not, presented and, and as a game. That's not the case for Star Citizen. They said that maybe explicitly. Not. Maybe they not. They said there will be future updates. Like this is not that's the fair. end of Star Citizen. All, all that so I'm I saying think is I that think like just two very different things. That's okay. Their idea can be whatever they want it to be. All that I'm getting at is that a 1.0 release for a game should mean that it can be done it doesn't have to be and a developer can say no we are going to keep working on it but as i would judge the game the 1.0 release is them releasing the game but that's kind of like saying when the first movie comes out in a trilogy that that's all that is necessary and sometimes that's what happens like if they don't get funding for the game like you Some, you have to be okay it's one with movie but like dune is not a one and done movie it isn't but you should be able to judge the merit of the first dune movie on just the dune first dune movie and in that case it holds up well right i'm not saying every trilogy does but you have to be able to like judge that i, I just think that you're right that. on a small scale on a very small on an on a, on a indie scale on a small scale you're completely like yes a 1.0 is ideally in an ideal scenario what you're saying but unfortunately for like insanely complex really big games like a 1.0 is just good enough it's not and good enough better be good form. enough is all i'm saying like 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 in my my case to play it before they put some stamp of approval on it is kind of doing it a disservice for me because there are early access games that i play the crap out of and i'm like the idea could have been better, but it wasn't enough that I'm going to come back and play this at 1.0. And 1.0 could be a better experience, and I might never experience that just because I don't get time, I don't but get enough to go back to it, etc. If you played Early Access, you might have had the ability to shape the development of the game. Because in Ashes of Creation, apparently they had GMs going around uh granting people wishes and if you wish for something to be in the game they're like okay hey that's, that will be in the game that's very true that is a fair assessment i'm not saying that you don't get to do that i'm just saying that i yeah, yeah. for me just based on my time i'm like it's hard. all i care about is that we beat matt and he broke the facial expression before we broke <laughs> uh, <laughs> and with that I'm hungry we're gonna let Nat go eat I do not know how the next three weeks will look we might or might not have a little break I am going to try to get us going from India and have an India episode but I don't know what times or how any of that will look I probably won't until I'm actually in India and seeing how everything's working and how the Wi-Fi is. I, don't, I just don't know. You going to bring some alcohol on the plane? <laughs> no, I will buy some and we'll work with what we got and have a fun episode. Cool. <laughs> but uh, if not, we will. Uh, one of our next episodes will be the week before Christmas. Get ready for the New Year's uh, episode. We will stream an episode on new year's together live in person it'll be a fun event catch us for that uh like and subscribe in the doobly do we have like 50 60 average viewers or something like that now on every episode on Thank youtube y'all you are awesome uh and with that we'll catch you in the next one bye peace kawaii this day <laughs>